Welcome to this new video. Today, I'm going to demonstrate a template for retrieving all Google results. This template is available free of charge in the Otoma Marketplace, so you can download it, analyze it, and use it as much as you like. I'll give you the link in the video description. So, we're going to use a Google Sheet with this template in which we'll fill in the keywords to be searched on Google and in which the results will be saved, i.e. URLs, titles, and meta descriptions. The Google Sheet consists of three tabs. Firstly, the Keywords tab, in which you enter the keywords you wish to search for. Next, the Results tab, where the results will be saved. And finally, the Settings tab, where you simply fill in which Google to search, faire.com, etc. And the maximum number of results for each keyword. Here's the template. I'll give you the demo first. I enter my Google Sheet ID, and off I go. So, first keyword. It retrieves the results. It'll save them in the Google Sheet. Then it moves on to the second keyword. That's it. All the keywords have been searched. Now, let's take a look at the Google Sheet. You may notice that for each keyword, the value that was no to indicate to Otoma that the keyword has not yet been processed has changed to yes. So, each time the results have been retrieved from Google, Otoma automatically switches this no value to yes. This means that in the event of a relaunch of the Google Sheet, only those keywords whose done value is set to no will be processed. So, in the event of a stop, a failure, or the subsequent addition of keywords, only those keywords whose done value is set to no will be processed in the results. Well, here are all my results. So, in the keywords column, the keyword used for the search, to filter very simply like an Excel file by keywords. And then, for each SERP result, title, meta description, and the URL. So you see, in just a few seconds, I've actually got my top 10 for the two keywords I was looking for. How does this template work? Well, there aren't too many steps, so it's not overly complex. First of all, we'll go to the Settings tab of the Google Sheet. To do this, we'll look for column B in the Settings tab. In other words, in the Settings tab, here, we retrieve these values. We'll retrieve the Google version and the number of results you want to retrieve. It will automatically retrieve all rows. These values, for practical reasons, I'm going to save them in variables. So I create a variable called Google. I assign it the value found here, i.e. far. Same thing with the maximum number of results. So I get the value here. First of all, I'm going to create a variable called Google, which will go to the Google Sheet in Settings to retrieve this value, FR. Then, on the same principle, I'll create a variable called Max Results, which will look in the Google Sheet for the value here. Finally, I create a variable called Done, which will allow me to manage the No or Yes value here. Next, I'll go back and read the same Google Sheet, but this time in the Keywords tab and columns A, B. So, Keywords tab, column A, B. From here, I'll create a loop that will allow me to read all the lines here on this tab. So, here, I'm going to create a loop with a loop data block. I'll name this loop, care loop. The source of the data is the Google Sheet, which I've named keywords. I've retrieved columns A and B, so I've retrieved the value done. I first check with the conditions block. If the value of done with the appropriate mustache syntax is no, is this yes or no? If it's no, it means it hasn't been processed. In this case, we'll go through the whole processing procedure. If, on the other hand, this condition is not met, i.e. the value is not no, we have an exit path here called fallback, so we simply update the status of the done value and go directly to the Google Sheet to update it. I'll come back to that later. Let's imagine that the keyword hasn't been processed, so the done value is set to no. In this case, the first step is to open the Google it with the correct value for fr.com that I've retrieved from settings. And in the URL, I enter the keyword directly. So now I'm going to create another loop, this time not with a loop data block, but with a loop elements block, which allows you specifically to create loops from elements in HTML code. The idea here is to retrieve each result. 
So go through them one by one, which means creating a loop on each of them. To do this, I had found the right CSS class, a class that corresponded to each result. And that was it. So I had determined that it was this class that would to target each result. And then, thanks to the Automa element selector that you activate on the front office side. So now we can search to retrieve the right values, or we can test values to check what it's framing. So we agree it frames each result, which means I can create a loop on these elements and it will go through them one by one. I determine the maximum number of results according to the value I've retrieved from the Google Sheet. From there, it's off to scrape each result. First of all, I check if there is a title. In this case, in Google, all the result titles are H3. So, is there an H3 for my result? If so, I'll retrieve the data. So, if my title, my H3 exists, I'll start this process. First of all, I'm going to feed the automat table I've created beforehand. In other words, it's a table that's specific to my template. To my template, in which I have four columns, which corresponds, if you remember, to the Google Sheet I showed you just before in the Results tab. This will basically copy and paste this automat table at the end into the Google Sheet. So, column, keywords, title, description, link, which corresponds exactly to this keywords, title, description, link from the results tab. So now I'm going to start feeding the first line of my table. First of all, I'm going to enter the keyword used, which will enter this. And the description variable, sometimes we don't have a meta description. So when in doubt, to avoid distorting the meta description with a previous value, I initialize it with an empty value. Then I retrieve the title of the result, i.e. the h3 tag, as I said before, of the current element in my loop. So here we are in the first element, then we'll move on to the next and so on. So here we are recovering the h3. I save it directly in my automat table. Next, I retrieve my description tag. So here, with the right CSS class, which I determined by analyzing the source code, and with the automat selector, which also saved me time, I assign the result to a variable I call description. From here, I'll apply a little treatment using a regular expression that will allow me, in fact, to potentially remove the date that can sometimes be displayed at the beginning of the meta description. So that's what Google displays. It doesn't come from the meta description, so I don't want it. So with a little regular expression provided by ChatGPT and a regex block in Automat, I remove this date. And then, after this treatment, I transfer the result of my description to the automat table. And finally, I retrieve the result link, which is simply the A. Tag of the current element. In the href attribute, I retrieve its value, i.e. the URL of the link. And I add this link directly to my automat table in the link column. So now we filled in the first row of the automat table. So what have we just done? We've this. We've just populated these four columns. And now I come to a block that marks the end of my loop. This means that, voila, my loop is finished, which means that automatically it'll know that I'm going to go back to the beginning of my loop, which is here. So what does that mean? It means that in the SERP, it will move on to the next result. It will repeat all the same processes. Once these processes are complete, I'll update my Google Sheet. So I've got a Google Sheet block again, this time in update mode. And I'm going to update, well, the results tab, columns A, A, D. So A, A, D in the results tab. And I'm basing this on my automat table. So I'm repeating what's been entered here. If I look in the logs, I can check what was recorded. So you see, in the automat table, basically, it's going to take all that. It will copy and paste from here. So it takes all the values and I update my done value since the keyword has been processed. So in the keywords tab, I'm going to switch this value from no to yes automatically. And that's the end of my keyword loop. So now I've finished my search on the first keyword 
I'll move on to the next keyword. And until I've, well, gone through all the keywords, in the keywords tab, whose done value is set to no, so they need to be processed. You haven't understood everything. Don't worry, that's normal. This was not a training video, but a demonstration video. The aim of my training is to teach you how to progressively master Automa so that you'll be comfortable with all templates. If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment and share it. It's my motivation to make more videos for you. And if you have any ideas for templates you'd like to see in a future video, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you don't want to miss any future videos, subscribe to my channel.